Hello and welcome to Storytime with Mr. Ryan. Today we will learn the story of Clarence Brazier, a Canadian citizen, an ordinary man, but for one big secret. For almost his entire life, Clarence was illiterate, meaning he was unable to read. But this didn't stop his persistence in ultimately learning how to read. In doing so, he became an inspiration to school children everywhere to ensure that if you try something and if you persist, eventually you will succeed. So today we read Clarence's Big Secret by Roy McGregor and Christine McGregor Cation with illustrations by Matilda Sink Mars. Let's hop on in. This is the very real story of Clarence Brazier, who was born a long time ago on a farm deep in the Canadian woods. For nearly 100 years, Clarence had a big secret. Clarence was the third of seven children. The boys, all six of them, slept in one room, three to a bed. On cold winter nights, Clarence always nabbed the warm spot in the middle. In the morning, he would let his brothers go to the outhouse first. That way, the seat would be warm for his turn. Clarence was always thinking. Clarence was big for his age and strong. By the age of six, he was milking the cows, harnessing the workhorses, Boxer and Biddy, and carrying heavy bales of hay. On his first day of school, Clarence eagerly took a seat in the front row with the other first graders. Welcome, said the teacher with a smile. Sure that Clarence belonged in a grade three because of his size, she asked him to stand and spell his name. Clarence didn't even know the alphabet yet. As he stood there, frozen, some of the students began to snicker. And that was that. Clarence burst from his seat and ran all the way home. Clarence would never attend school again. Soon after that first day, his father was blinded in a terrible accident. I will take care of him and the farm, Clarence vowed. And he did just that. By the time he was seven, Clarence was doing his father's chores as well as his own. The two made extra money by cutting trees to sell for firewood. Clarence would choose a tree. He and his father would cut it. And then Clarence would guide his father to safety before the tree fell. Barely into his teens, Clarence went to work as a logger. His winters were spent felling trees. In spring, he nimbly guided logs down river to the mills. The men in the bush camp loved having Clarence around. On long winter evenings, he taught the men how to square dance, clacking spoons to keep the beat and calling out the steps. Some of the men would even tuck tea towels into their belts like skirts so they could dance the ladies' parts. The owner wanted to make Clarence boss of the bush camp, but Clarence was terrified the job would expose his big secret, so he quit. Clarence headed north to work in the gold mines. One day, a young woman caught his eye and so distracted him, he ran his bike into the ditch. I thought that was just a big snake, Clarence said, pointing to a twisted branch on the road. So I pulled over to save you from it. Clarence's ridiculous explanation made Angela laugh. They began courting and soon decided to marry. Clarence didn't want to keep his secret from Angela, so just before their wedding day, he plucked up his courage. I have something to tell you, he said, but first, please promise that you will never tell anyone. Angela promised, and for the first time ever, Clarence shared his secret. Clarence did well at the mine, and soon the boss offered him a promotion. Even though it meant more money, Clarence feared his secret would get out, and he quit. Clarence needed a job where his secret wouldn't get in the way, so he and Angela bought a farm and began to raise crops and animals, and a family. They had four daughters. They were good farmers and so successful they even had an indoor toilet. The girls adored their dad. He was kind and funny and a great practical joker. He gave them nicknames. Pearl was Muskrat because she was a hard worker. 
Doris became corky because she had been a chunky baby. Janet was razor blade because she was skinny and sharp. Irene, the baby, he called Archie because Clarence had always wanted a boy. None of his daughters knew their father's secret. Years passed. The girls finished their schooling, married, and had families of their own. Clarence was a wonderful grandfather. He told stories, sang songs, and played harmonica lullabies for the little ones. He gave piggyback rides, and when his grandchildren were old enough, he taught them how to cut firewood and prune raspberry bushes to produce the biggest, juiciest berries. Shortly after her 80th birthday, Angela passed away. She and Clarence had been married for 65 years. Clarence was heartbroken and worried. With Angela's help, he had hidden his big secret for 93 years. It was Angela who had made the lists and done the shopping, handled the mail and paid the bills, written the letters and signed the report cards, all because Clarence did not know how to read. Clarence needed to find a way to live on the farm without Angela's help, so he came up with a plan. He would teach himself to read. His first school books were junk mail. He took sales flyers and matched pictures, bicycles, lawnmowers, frying pans, to the words beside them. Since he couldn't make a shopping list, he cut labels off packages at home and matched them to items on the grocery store shelves. One day, his daughter Doris found him studying a flyer and mumbling to himself. What are you doing, Dad? she asked. Clarence had no choice. For just the second time in his life, he shared his secret. Doris had been a school teacher. Would you like me to teach you how to read? she asked. Clarence said he would, and so he became his daughter's oldest student. My best student ever, Doris boasted. Clarence learned quickly, and then he read and read and read. He devoured books. He pored over newspapers. When he turned 100, he read all the cards he received. Best of all, Clarence went back to school to read to students and tell them his story. And people listened. They were amazed to hear about the man who had learned to read when he was nearly 100 years old. Once again, Clarence was the biggest person in the class, but this time, no one laughed. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me in this wonderful story of literacy and inspiration. Believe me, if you try and try and try, eventually you will achieve your goals. This was a wonderful story about learning how to read. No matter how old you are, you are still able to read. Everyone should be able to learn how to read. Literacy is one of the most powerful things we have. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm Mr. Ryan. I hope you enjoyed reading this story, and I encourage you to check out some of my other stories on this channel. And if you're looking for more fun activities you can do from home, be sure to check out veronalibrary.org slash children. Until next time, I'll be seeing you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.